And let's set debug equals one as a preprocessor macro for the debug configuration. And you can see that that's turned bold if we deselect it so you can see, indicating that we've customized that setting. If we select the release configuration, you'll see it turns unbold and no longer has a value because we haven't set one for that configuration. Now you remember I told you around the last demo that the project contains the settings that are general for all your development, but the targets contain the settings specific to one build product? There are settings at the target level too. And if we click on our project window and click on our target, open an info panel, you can see it's a parallel set of build settings. It's the same list of build settings. Anything you've set at the project level is going to be inherited at the target level. This is something that confuses a lot of people new to Xcode. So it's something I really want to stress. Uh, it's a good takeaway. When you're trying to set a setting to control something about your product, if you set it at the project level, all your targets in your project will inherit that value. If you set it at the target level, only that one target will use the setting. And anything set at the target level overrides the value set at the project level. So when you go to set some setting, when you're working with Xcode, you, you maybe double click on that project and set the setting and hit build and, and it doesn't do what you expect, make sure to check the target and see if you've overridden that build setting. Now here, we, uh, we set that preprocessor macros setting at the project level. What if we filter on the target for preprocessor again and see what value it has now? You can see we're looking at the debug configuration and there it says debug equals one. But it's not bold. It's because we customized it at the project level and it's inheriting it at the target level. If we were to set a value at the target level, it would be bold there, it would no longer inherit. And if we select the release configuration for the target, you can see that setting is no longer there. Let's close both info panels and let's try building and running. You can see it said hello world there. Well, we had that log statement. Didn't we just set that preprocessor macro? Well, we didn't tell it which build configuration we wanted it to use. How do we do that? With the notion of the active build configuration. Let's go to the project menu, and just like we can set an active target, we can set an active build configuration. And it's set to release right now, so it didn't compile in our debugging log statement, and it didn't log the debug message. So if we set that to debug now, and we go ahead and build and run again, you can see we printed out our debug statement. Pretty simple. One other thing you may want to be especially aware of uh, let's open up our, our project info panel. When you're building an Xcode, you really want to make sure that you're going to be building universal when you release. So that architecture setting happens to be the top setting when you open up an info panel. That's how you're going to build universal. If we double click on this setting to edit it, we'll get a couple check boxes. Let's go ahead and click, uh, make sure both are checked. So we're going to turn on the Intel checkbox, click OK. This will make us build for both architectures so we build universal. Let's go back to our slides. So you've been editing for a while, debugging. You, you, you think you've got your project ready to deliver to your customers. But there are a whole bunch of symbols here you may need to worry about. You may want to make sure that your, project, or your product is ready to give to your customers. That's where stripping comes in. There are three types of stripping, conceptually, that you'll want to worry about. First, there's dead code stripping. If you have any code in your application that never actually gets called, you don't actually want that in the product you ship to your customers, because it'll make the resulting binary larger, reduce performance. So you want to strip out all that dead code. Then you may have debug symbols that you were generating. And you don't want to ship those to your customers. Those will also make your binary a lot larger. And they may reveal things about your product that you don't want to reveal. So you want to strip out debug symbols. 
And finally, the third type, privacy stripping. Well, you may not want your customers to re reverse engineer your application. So you may want to strip out all symbols that don't actually need to be in the resulting binary. Anything that's not a public entry point to a framework of yours, or almost anything in an application, that's called privacy stripping. Unfortunately, this can be sort of confusing to set up in Xcode. So we're going to step through and show you all the different settings that you're going to need to manage to correctly set up stripping for your product. So let's go back to the demo. And we've got a project here. Let's open up an info panel on the project. There are a myriad of settings that you're going to have to deal with here. If we type in strip into the filter box, we'll find a whole bunch of them to start out with. So first you'll see at the top it says dead code stripping. Well, we want to turn that on. and We're currently editing our release configuration. You can see from that pop-up. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Those of you coming from Code Warrior may be used to dead code stripping, stripping out your dead code before any linker errors could have occurred. Well, in Xcode, it will link and then dead code strip. So if you have any linker errors that would be caused by your dead code, you need to fix those or remove that code, or it won't compile, or it won't link, rather. To do our dead code stripping, we need to make sure that we build with a bunch of debug symbols, because the linker needs those debug symbols to strip out the dead code. So let's filter on debug, and we'll see the settings for debug settings. First of all, we need to make sure generate debug symbols is on. But we also need to make sure that the level of debug symbols is set correctly to let dead code stripping work. It needs full debug symbols, all symbols, or dash G full. So we're going to set that. That's all the settings we needed to set to make dead code stripping work. If we were to build and link, it would strip out dead code now. But we just turned on debug symbols, and we turned on all the debug symbols. We don't want to ship that in a release, so how do we strip the debug symbols back out? Well, let's type strip back into our filter box again. And you can see there's a strip link product setting. It's currently on. That'll strip things back out of the product, like debug symbols if deployment post-processing is on. Deployment post-processing means you want to go ahead and strip your product and install it. Well, there's a separate setting for that, but, but do all these things that are conditional on deployment post-processing. So in your release, you probably want to have that on. We also want to check the strip style. The strip style will tell it what we want to strip out when we strip the linked product. Well, do we just want to strip out debug symbols? No, we probably want to do privacy stripping too. We want to strip out all those entry points and symbols that we don't need to ship in our fi finished application. So let's make sure that the strip style is set to all symbols. That's what it's set to by default. 